In this video, I'm going to help you understand that YouTube videos are okay, but what you really need to depend on are your muscles. I was having a conversation with my wife recently. She's a knitter. She loves to knit. She has knit me many hats and some, some scarves and some sweaters, and um, she does it a lot. The thing is, is that we were talking about a specific technique. Um, there's pretty much just only two types of stitch, evidently, in knitting, but there's lots and lots and lots of different techniques and things and stuff, and it was mostly all over my head. But at one point, she was talking about a specific technique for kind of starting and ending in the same spot or something like that. And she said that she read about it in one of her magazines and it kind of explained it there. And she didn't feel like she really understood it. So she went on to YouTube. Now, as a YouTuber, this would be the part of the story where I, where I would say, and then she watched it on YouTube and it all made perfect sense and everything was awesome. And there were puppies and unicorns, but actually what happened was she watched it and it didn't help. Like, the way the book was describing it versus the way that the YouTuber was describing it, even watching, I, I think this is the motion you do when you're knitting, I'm not quite sure, but even watching what she needed to get done wasn't helping. So what she did was decided to actually just sit down and brute force try it herself until she figured it out. And once she figured it out, she built up a muscle memory. And now it's very simple for her to start this whole sort of thing to make this project work in the way it needs to. But the descriptions in the books and the descriptions even in the video where she watched a person do it didn't make any sense to her until she used her two hands to actually do it herself. You can probably see where this is going. I love to watch YouTube videos. Many, many, many miniature painters love to watch YouTube videos. And you can learn things from YouTube videos. I try to teach you things here every week, to some degree, for better or for worse, in YouTube videos. The trick is, is that I have seen people in the tutorials that Sam and I do sometimes on this channel say, well, you didn't show the whole process. Like, you didn't paint the entire cloak or all of the pants, or I, I couldn't see it close enough and things like that. And I get that. But... I gotta tell you, the things that I've learned from Sam over the years have not been from sitting and watching him paint at this distance. The majority of the things that I've learned from Sam, and we've known each other for quite some time, and he's taught me things, when he was first thinking about um, getting into teaching, you know, classes for, uh, you know, for, for painting, which is what he does now, um, he would kind of guinea pig it with some people around us and stuff, and sometimes I would get to sit in and all that, and he would teach things and show things. Um, but it always starts with a, this is how you do it. And it could be a blog post, not from Sam, although he does have a blog. Um, but, you know, or it could be a video or whatever. But the most important thing is that once you have the concept, then you sit down and actually try to do it yourself. And I've had people, Sam included, teach me an idea or a concept for painting without using a model or even a brush. They've used their finger as the brush and their hand as the model. And they're like, when you paint this way, the paint will end where it's, where your, where your brush stops. And then, and you don't, you know, and just processes and ideas and concepts like that, which are great in theory, but they don't actually crystallize in your practice until you actually practice and put some, you know, paint on a model. Some people may call these folks armchair quarterbacks, which is a reference to sports that I only vaguely understand. But the fact is, is that there are a lot of people who really like to watch this kind of stuff and, and learn. And I'm a big fan of learning. I try to do it as much as I can. And I think it's important to understand this stuff, but it's even more important to make it an actual practice, do something where you start to actually try to do it. I think there's a lot of people out there, and you may be one of them, who thinks, well, if I just watch enough videos, read enough blogs, whatever, then I'll eventually be a good painter when I start. And I hate to break it to you, but that's not the way it works. Again, I'm going to make a sports reference, which I don't know why. But um, if LeBron James, who is the only basketball player I currently know, started to teach me how to shoot a basketball, which is like this, uh, he could tell me and explain things and, and all that kind of stuff and maybe tell you, oh, it's all in the thumb, and that's really the trick. And there are little techniques and things like that in painting and in basketball, and probably lots of different things, where knowing just a little bit more 
helps you kind of make a leap ahead. Um, when I taught people about, you know, the, the the wet palette, it helped a lot of people leap ahead in their painting and, and start to do better and things like that. If you haven't seen the wet palette video, you really ought to. Pachow. But the trick is, is that if LeBron taught me this is how you do it and you make a basket, and then I tried to do it, I would probably not make a basket. And I would say, well, I learned from LeBron and he's the best and why don't I get to, I can't make the basket. It's probably because he's done this a million times or, well, I don't know how many, but a lot, a lot more times than I have. And he's built up a muscle memory. Muscle memory is one of the most important things in painting, in miniature painting. Um, understanding the techniques first, understanding what dry brushing is and when you use it. That's important. That's something you can learn from a, a article or a video or a podcast. You don't even have to see it. They can tell you in a podcast and you can understand it. And then you've at least got that nugget in your brain, but you're not going to actually really get it until you take the old brush, put a little bit of silver on it, brush that silver off on a piece of paper towel, like they told you, and then take some Reaper Bones model that you're using as a test subject and start working on the chain mail and understanding how hard you need to push and how fast you need to move and how many times back and forth you need to go. Doing that stuff, actually taking the information that you're gleaning from the internet in whatever form, and then sitting down and actually practicing and doing it, that's one of the most important things. And it doesn't come instantly. It will come quickly. The lowest, I could take pretty much anybody. And after teaching them a couple of quick techniques, just talking to them and telling them and not even showing them, but telling them how to do it. And then when they do it, you know, then they start to feel it because that's when you really start to understand is when you start to feel it like, oh, that's working. That's the technique that I want. That's the look that I want. When you do that, I can get literally anybody to a passable kind of tabletop quality pretty quickly. But I can't train somebody like Sam's level or like any of the big winners like at um, Crystal Brush or any of those. I don't have that ability. And nobody out there did actually train them to that level. They trained themselves through muscle memory. And sadly, the only way to get muscle memory is to keep practicing. So if you are thinking about making the leap into miniature painting, and I've said this a bunch of times before, understand that you're going to have to you're going to have to sort of stink a little bit when you start. So don't start on this super expensive model that you've just gotten that you really love and you spent $200 on some big, huge, like a bust or whatever. Start painting plastic army men. Start painting the backs of plastic spoons. Start painting on anything else other than the fancy stuff. Build up your muscle memory, get things moving, and then you can start to move towards where you want to be down the road. But always keep practicing because that's how we as humans learn to do physical kind of things like this. If this was all academic in our brains, it's a totally different story. But when you are doing something with your hands, you have to train your hands and information has to come in your brain first, but then your hands have to do the learning. And one of the reasons why you can't just automatically take whatever is said out on the internet as gospel, uh, well, except for this, this you have to take as gospel, but it's because everybody, everybody's hands are different. If you go back and watch a video I did a couple of years ago at Adepticon, I talked to six or seven, seven, I think, well-known painters, and I asked them all the same six questions. And the answers that they gave were wildly different from each other because they all do things a good deal differently. If you haven't seen that, it's also a lot of fun. Pachow. The, what that taught us, I think, uh, is that there's not one right way to do anything in miniature painting. So getting an idea getting a lot of ideas, frankly, getting a lot of different ideas about how to dry brush or how to wet blend or how to do any of these things. And then trying it out and finding out what works best for you with your hand strength, your level of shakiness or not shakiness, and just the things that make you, you sitting down and trying to figure out, this is how I'm going to be doing this and learning that that is the really the only thing that can take you from being a beginning painter who really doesn't know anything to the next level where you can decently make some stuff to put on the tabletop. Or if you're already at that level and you wanna go higher, you probably already know this, but it's practice, practice, practice.